It's God's house today, right? That's right, that's right. Welcome to the party. And um, there is a party going on right here, right? There's a party going on. We're kicking off our series called House Party. It's three weeks until Easter. And so, you know, some people, they wonder as they come in here, they're like, is it okay to have this much fun in church? I mean, is that even legal? And I'm saying, yes, it is. Not only should we have fun in church... I mean, we have a reason to celebrate. We have reason to celebrate, and that's what house party is all about. Really, it's all about the fact that every time there's a party in the New Testament, it's about lost people getting found. It's about people coming to know Jesus, and that's what we're all about here at the Connection Church. We believe God loves parties. In fact, uh, Jesus' first miracle that he performed was at a party, right? It was at a wedding celebration. And, and then Jesus said that every time somebody cr steps over that line of faith and gives their heart and their life to Jesus and moves out of, I like to say, moves out of time into eternity by becoming a part of God's family, the angels in heaven are throwing down a party, a celebration. In Luke 15, verse 10, in the same way there's joy in the presence of God's angels when even one sinner repents. And at the Connection Church, what we want to do is we want to, we want to help there to be continual, ongoing celebration and partying in heaven. Jesus told a lot of stories about parties, and he pictured God's kingdom as a great party, as a great celebration. And one of those stories happens in our text for today in Luke chapter 14, and uh, if you would turn there, it's in the Gospel of Luke, chapter 14, verse 15. Why don't we stand together as we read God's Word, all right? Let's do that. Here we go. Hearing this, a man sitting at the table with Jesus exclaimed, What a blessing it will be to attend a banquet in the kingdom of God. And Jesus replied with this story. A man prepared a great feast and sent out many invitations. When the banquet was ready, he sent his servant to tell the guests, Come, the banquet's ready. But they all began making excuses. One said, I've just bought a field and must inspect it. Please excuse me. Another said, I have just bought five pairs of oxen and I want to try them out. Please excuse me. Another said, I now have a wife, so I can't come. The servant returned and told his master what they had said. His master was furious. He said, go quickly into the streets and alleys of the town and invite the poor, the crippled, the blind, and the lame. After the servant had done this, he reported, there's still room for more. So his master said, go out into the country lanes and behind the hedges and urge anyone you find to come so that the house will be full. For none of those I first invited will get even the smallest taste of my banquet. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, God, we pray, God, that you would use your word today to speak to our hearts, God, to fire us up about your heart, and God, that you would change us by the power of your word today. Help us to understand it and to put it into practice in our lives. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen. All right, have a seat. And uh, there's so much in this rich, rich story. Jesus is a great storyteller and he was over at this religious type person's house these this spiritual superstar and one of them one of these super spiritual type people was kind of bragging and boasting and saying won't it be great for all the people just like me to get to heaven and we're going to have our own little party up in heaven and Jesus was not going to let him get away with that Jesus said, let me tell you a little story to kind of illustrate God's kingdom. And he said, if you're going to have a great party, there's certain things that you're going to need to have 
uh, a God kind of party. And we're going to be talking about the party supplies today. So if you follow along in your notes, all right, the first one, the first thing you're going to need is the people. The people make the difference in the party. In fact, so much so that I thought it would be cool to have some people up here on the stage right now. We're going to invite some, some of you guys to come up onto the stage. Look at that. We're coming on up, joining the stage party. You got to have people up in the house. Welcome to the stage. Welcome to the party. Let's welcome them up here. Come on. That's good. That's good. Have you ever uh, had a party and nobody showed up to your party? Uh, you know, I've had that. I mean, when we started the church, we would, we would literally, we would have a group meeting on Tuesday night, and, and we would look out that little window at the top of our, our door, and we would be watching to see if some car might just full, pull up. And if they didn't show up, then we were like, okay, we're just going to watch American Idol tonight. All right. You know, the worst thing, though, is not when nobody shows up to your party. It's when, like, somebody shows up to your party. Okay, like one person shows up to the party. That's the worst thing. Like, our very first event as a church, literally, uh, I invited people over to the house. It was, it was kind of a, it was a barbecue block party. And it rained. We had a bouncy in the backyard and things like this. Well, it rained. Nobody showed up except this one lady. And I felt so bad for this lady who was there at my house. And I apologized. Oh, I'm sorry you came, you know. It was just, it was lame. It was bad. It was a bad party. No, if you're going to have a great party, you got to have the people show up to the party. You want to have a full house going on. All right. Now, at this party that Jesus is talking about, there were these VIPs who were invited, these super important people who at least they thought they were all that. And the first thing that they said was, yeah, we'll, we'll go. But then when it came time, they, they backed out. It's, the problem was this host, he wanted the right people there. Sometimes we're like that. we got to have this exclusive guest list. I, I heard about... Um, the Grammys the other night after the, the after party, okay, rapper Tyga was hosting a party. And so, so walking up to the club, Sir Paul McCartney, ex Beatle, you know, yeah, my, my, you know, one, one of my, you know, musical heroes, okay, he, he shows up to the party with Beck. They walk up to the door, there's a bouncer at the door. And he says, y'all can't come in. Y'all weren't invited to the party. And Paul, he says, how, exclusive, how VIP do you have to be? How VIP do you have to be to get into the party? And, and so some parties are like that. They want the certain right people. Unfortunately, some churches are that way too. Some churches are that way where they're looking not just for anybody who will come, but they're looking for the right, quote unquote right kind of people, you know, people that, that are people of influence, people maybe they don't have certain problems, maybe they're people with money. This is the kind of thing. And the, the, what I've found to be true is those kind of people, they got problems too, okay? They're just better at hiding their problems. The problem is they don't know how much they need to be at the party. I want to talk about the people who are at the party, who need to be at the party. I believe that we have some of the most incredible people at the Connection Church. I, I believe that, that, that the people make the difference. And every week we have people who are coming into these doors and they're walking in for the first time and and that just pumps me up because I'm like, they have no idea what's about to happen, okay? They have no idea the experience they're about to have and, and that they're going to get to meet you, okay? That's the thing. They're going to meet you. You're going to meet them right where they're at. You're going to accept them. You're going to love them. You're going to begin to connect with them, and that makes all the difference. And what I believe to be true, what I've found to be true is that today, People are belongers before they're believers, okay? People are belongers before they're believers. Uh, it used to be that it's like, believe what we believe, and then you can come in. But not today. 
Today it is, welcome to the family. You're a part of us. Now let us introduce you to the Jesus that we believe in. And we see this happen as people come in, they're accepted, and they begin to belong. They don't have to have the right clothes on. They don't have to have the right pa secret password or the secret handshake. They're just welcomed in right where they're at with this come-as-you-are culture, okay? And, and so a, a party can definitely be made by the people who are present at the party. I'm talking about the who. But I'm also talking next, I want to talk about the why. What is the attraction? What is the attraction to the party? Every party has a reason has a why. Let me ask you guys back here uh, on on the stage. Uh, the attraction one one big attraction to a party is definitely the food, right? You got to have the food. So so what is your favorite party food? You can you, can you share that with me? Hot dogs. Hot dogs. <laughs> All right. That sounds good. Sounds good to me. I'm down. I'm down. <laughs> Who else? Who else? There's no wrong answer. It's just whatever your favorite party food is, right? You grill them up on the... Yeah, you know what? This afternoon, we're going out to, uh, we're going out to what? L Lake Kyle Park or something at 2.30 if it doesn't rain, which it probably won't. And I, I bet people are going to be grilling hot dogs out there. <laughs> All right? All right. What else? What? 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 Pizza. Pizza. It's a pizza party. That's my kind of party right there. We got some more good, good uh, pa party... Steaks. Steaks. Whoa. You're throwing down the good stuff now. All right. You're taking it to the next level. All right. I, I, I would say, what, what you take it from me? I, I would say chips and salsa. That's my kryptonite. You know? Yeah. Give it up. And queso, especially when it's queso con queso, queso, you know, like double, triple cheese. All right. Yeah, so, so there's that. What are you celebrating? Is it a Christmas party? Is it a graduation party? Is it a birthday party? I mean, what's the, what's, the, what's the thing? What's the reason behind the party? In verse 15, it says they were having a huge dinner party at the Connection Church. We're having a Jesus party, all right? Jesus is the life of the party. It's all about Jesus. It's all about Jesus. In fact, we have a reason to celebrate, and that is this. Jesus changes lives. All right, Jesus changes lives. That's why we celebrate here week after week after week. It's about Jesus, and we make a big deal out of Jesus at the Connection Church. When this servant goes out to invite people, he is given a job. He is to quickly go out because there's an urgency about it, and he is to urge the people that he finds to come in. One translation said he is to compel them. What does that mean? It means to entice, to persuade, to draw people in. And, and here's the thing. The message of Jesus is a compelling message because people need what only Jesus can offer. People need hope. And in the Connection Church, we are dealers in hope. They need forgiveness. They need mercy. They need grace. What only Jesus can offer. And what we want to do is we've got to get out of these doors and get out to where people are. This servant, he went out and he beat the bushes. He, he, not only did he go out one time and, and bring in all these people, he went out again and again. He continued to go until the house was full. And we need to go out into our schools and into our workplace and into our neighborhoods and, and into our local businesses, wherever we go, and onto our social media. And wherever we are, we need to invite people to come in. Now, you can't make somebody come. You can't make somebody respond. But the more invitations that you put out there, the more you're going to find people will respond. And people will come into this place. And people will meet Jesus. And their lives will be changed. You say, Cole, how can you be so sure about that? How do you know that? Because I've seen it time and time and time again. Hundreds of times, this is what happens. And, and it's, you say, well, the people I know, they, they are not interested. They're the, they're the last people on earth that would actually come into a church. Those are the very people that God loves and that he's got a target on their back. And he, he has put them in your life so that you can reach out to them. You just got to extend the invitation. Let me tell you something else that's an attraction to people. And that is, believe it or not, that's your life. Your life. 
makes all the difference. When you begin to live out the change that God is making in your life, and you may not even realize it, but I want you to stop and think back on how far you've come. Remember where you were before Jesus found you. Just look at where you've come to because that life change is something people, people can't deny it. They can't argue with it. It's something that God has done in your life, but not only your life, but collectively together, life after life here at this place. And so we together are a witness of the power of God. And we, when we realize what Jesus has done to change our lives, it just becomes this natural response to go out and reach out and extend that invitation to others so that then they can respond. In fact, that's the R that I'm talking about, the RSVP, which is French for respondez s'il vous plaît, I think. All right, or the, the, how do we say it, the English version, the, the I mean, what is the, like the redneck version? It's just respond so very promptly, you know? So please respond, respond. And that makes sense because the, the person who's throwing the party wants to know who's coming, how much food do we need, who's going to be there. And, and in this story, this first group of the, the invitees, they were so self-important. They thought they were all that. They didn't need to come, and any excuse would do. So they make all kinds of lame excuses. What was the first one? He said, I bought some land. I, I need to go check on it. Well, the land is going to be there. It'll be there after the party. I bought some livestock. Well, the livestock, they're going to be there. I just got married. Well, bring her along. It's all right. Come on. She's welcome at the party too. Bring her on. And, and there's a party going on, and you need to be there. Don't miss out. These people, they thought, I'm a shoe in for the party because of who I am, because of, of you know, I, I'm a pretty good person. After all, I've never killed anybody and I don't cheat on my taxes and so I'm, I'm in. God's going to just let me in. But Jesus' whole point of this story is to say, don't be so sure about that because it's not whether or not you're just invited to the party. It's how are you responding? How are you going to receive the invitation? Are you going to RSVP to the party? Are you going to receive God's invitation? Don't make excuses. We make all kinds of excuses, you know. People make excuses about the party here. They're like, oh, I can't go today because uh, i got to do yard work. I can't go today because I've got work to do. I've got my job. I can't go today because uh, my, fa you know, my family, I've got this family thing going on. I can't go today because it's raining outside. Anybody used the raining outside excuse <laughs> before? You know, it's rainy. Well, okay, how about when it's sunny? Oh, it's sunny outside now. Well, that's it. Wait a minute. God's got to like dial in the perfect temperature for you to come to church. All they want is your money. There's too many hypocrites at the church. That's all right. There's room for one more hypocrite. You know, come join us. You're welcome. You're welcome. You know, there are tons of excuses you can use. There's, there's so many. If you don't have one, let me know. I'll give you one. In fact, there's a whole, now that we've got uh, electronics and technology that help us with our excuses. There's an app for your phone that you can download. It's called Got This Thing. Got This Thing. And what you do is you put it, you put it in your phone, and, and, and it'll actually go into local events or in, in our area, and it'll put all those local events automatically on your Google Calendar. So that when somebody comes up to you, and they're like, hey, can you help me move this Saturday? You say, hold on, let me check my calendar. Oh, I'm sorry, I got this thing. All right, I got this thing. I, I've got, you know, I can't go. So you always have a ready-made excuse. When it comes to doing what God has asked us to do and go out and reach out to people, sometimes we got this thing. And we say, I, I, can't, I can't go. What if they make fun of me? What if they laugh at me? What if they reject me? Kind of that worst-case scenario that we build in our minds. You know who's great with worst-case scenarios? Mom. Right? You ever had your mom... Like, she's like the expert at the worst case scenario. If anything can go wrong, it'll be the worst possible thing. Like, uh, like, my mom would tell me, she would say, honey, be sure you wear clean underwear, right? In case, why? In case, you remember this? In case you get in an accident, right? Because then you're in the accident, maybe you're passed out, maybe, 
you know, the jaws of life have to come in and rip open the car, and then they're going to have to cut your clothes off of you, and, and they're going to look, and they're gonna, the first thing they're going to be worried about is your, whether you have clean underwear. I'm like, Mom, Mom, if I have an accident like that, no question, my underwear will not be clean <laughs> at this point. That's not, that's not something to... To, to worry about. But, but let's think about it in terms of what God has called us to do, to go out and reach out and to invite some people. What's the worst that's going to happen? What do you think they're going to do? Like, you know, punch you in the nose? What are they going to do? They're going to they're gonna say, don't ever talk to me again, you freak. Stay away from me. No, 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 no. No, what's the worst they're going to do? So they'll probably say, no, no. They might say, make up some lame excuse. I got something. Can't go. Or, or maybe they'll say, sure, I'll go check it out. I'd love to. And maybe they'll come into this place and maybe they'll hear about Jesus in a way that they've never thought about or understood before. And maybe they'll accept him as their Lord and Savior. And maybe their life will be changed. And maybe their eternity will be changed forever. And maybe God will use you to make the difference. Maybe God can use you in that way. Wouldn't that be incredible? And so we just got to move past our fears. Okay, move past those fears. It's worth the risk. So you got to have the right RSVP, but then we've got to set the temperature for the party. The, the next one is the temperature for the party. It's getting hot in here, right? We want it to be the heat turned up for the party. And you, you know the difference between a thermometer and a thermostat? The difference is the thermometer, it tells the temperature of the room. The thermostat sets the temperature of the room. So when you raise the thermostat, you're raising the temperature. What we want to be is we want to be spiritual thermostats that raise the spiritual temperature in the room. We, we have all kinds of people who come in here. They're coming with all different expectations and when you turn up the heat with your passion to worship Jesus, okay, and they begin to experience that, you're setting the spiritual temperature. You're changing the temperature. When you come in here and you have great expectations for what God is going to do, and you come in here and you say, God, I, want, I know you're going to change lives today. And God, it's going to start with my life. I'm gonna, my life is going to be changed, and you're going to change the life of the people around me. And you're not only thinking about it, but you're doing something about it. You're acting on it. You're, you're engaged. You're taking notes. As you see some of these guys up here taking notes. Look at this. Way to go. Writing it down. It's awesome. It's awesome. Thank you. All right. Taking the notes. Writing it down. When we're worshiping, you're actively engaged and participating. You're setting the spiritual temperature. Let me ask you this. How many of you, you uh, have had a party at your house. Who, who, who sometimes has party? Okay, Darren, you have parties. How do you get ready for people to come over to your house? Uh, <laughs> no, you make sure your house is prepared, it's clean, it's ready. Okay, it's you clean up the house, you got to have everything there. What do you got to have? What, anybody else? Anybody else? You have people over to your house? No, 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 no. <laughs> what? What'd you say? I love that. You got to have the slamming playlist, you got to have the right music. For the party. Uh, so that's so, that's so important. You got to have what? Prepare the food. Prepare the food. That's right. Every week, every week we're delivering God's word as the bread of life into people's lives. We got to get that ready. We got to be prepared in this place. Uh, because, check this out. What did he do in verse 16? It says that he prepared for the great feast. He was prepared for the people to come over. And we set the spiritual temperature for the house party by getting prepared, getting ready for our guests. Because check this out. At the Connection Church, every Sunday, we are a family expecting guests. Okay? Did you get that? This is a family, but we're a family expecting guests. Now, I imagine when you have guests over to your house, you act a little different than, than you do when nobody's over at your house. You know, when nobody's over at your house, you might be like all slobbed out. And you might be like, um, you know, we just get out the, the, the paper plates and plasticware. And, and, you know, sometimes, well, anyway, let me just say, you're going to act different when people come over. 
I hope. I hope you are. You're going you're gonna to maybe get out the, the better dishes. You're probably not going to burp, uh, you know, uh, you know at the table or, you know, pass gas or whatever it is you do when nobody's there. Um, you, <laughs> you, you're going to make sure that you clean up. And, 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 and so that's what we want. Are you being hypocritical when you act that way? You know, when you act different from the way you normally act when nobody's at your house? No. No, what are you doing? You're showing honor to your guests. You're saying, we're glad you're here. Uh, we were expecting you. We prepared for you. And so that's what we do uh, here. We're expecting people to show up every week. And guess what they do? They do. They show up. And we want them to know we're ready for them. That's why we have the, the free donuts and we have a free gift with the, the, you know, the, the gift that we give all of our guests as they go out to the VIP booth. And we do that because we say, we're glad you're here. We were expecting you. We were looking forward to you being here. And I found this verse in the Bible that I think is pure gold. It's so awesome. In Micah, Micah chapter 4, verse 1, it says, In the last days, the mountains of the Lord's house will be the highest of all, the most important place on earth. It will be raised over the other hills, and people from all over the world will stream there to worship. We're living in the last days, okay? We're living in the last days, and there is no more important place on earth than the local church. The most important place on the earth is what God is doing through the local church. The local church is the hope of the world. It's God's plan to see lives changed. And there's no other place that I'd rather be than in the local church. That's why I've committed my life to the church. And if you show me anything better that I could do with my life, I, I'm, I'm there. But I don't believe that there's anything better going today than the local church. And so um, this vision that Micah has cast here is he says people are going to be streaming in. People are going to be streaming in. When the church is hitting on all cylinders and is working as God has planned for it to be and he's envisioned it to be, it is compelling. People stream in these doors for one purpose. That's to worship God. And we set the spiritual temperature by our worship. Worship that is compelling and creative. You, you, you come in here and you say, man, they do some crazy things at the Connection Church. Why do they do that? Because we think that... Uh, that we shouldn't, I, I, here's what I say. It's a sin to bore people with the most exciting message on the planet. All right? Why, why would we do that? Why, the Christians should be the most creative people on earth. And the church should be the most creative place on the earth. Because we have a creative God. When we worship together, there is power in that. Would you rather, you know, sing like on your own like a solo or would you rather sing with a large group of people okay any takers on singing a solo right now anybody down with that all right Ron I'd love to hear that all right there's power when we get together to worship because people you know they they naturally we're, we're wired for worship did you know that that's why when we go to a rock concert or you go to a rap concert and people throw their hands in the air and they wave them around like they just don't care right? There's something very natural about that, like going to a football game and screaming. You know, you see grown men, normally pretty cool, and they'll be crying, and they'll be like painting their face and going nuts over a football game. And, and then we come into church, and we want to come in here, and we want to be all cool, like, oh, it ain't no thing, you know? And we just be like all cool. No, 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 no. This, we need to get excited about this. We need to get excited about God and about Jesus changing lives. And when we worship compellingly and we're excited about what God is doing and people walk into those doors and they see that, they, they, something clicks. Something checks in their life where they say, that's it. That's why I was created. That's why I was made. And, and, and in fact, Augustine, he wrote this, God, you have made us for yourself and our hearts are restless until they find rest in you. Pascal, he said there's a God-shaped vacuum in the heart of every man and only God can fill it. And what we're trying to do out there, people are trying to fill their lives with all sorts of stuff, anything they can find to try to fill that void, but it will always be a void until they fill it with the creator. It's a space that God designed 
that, that we long for him. And that's the only thing that's going to truly satisfy. He's the only one who will truly satisfy. And when we come here together with one purpose and one focus of helping people connect with Jesus, powerful things are going to happen. Lives are going to be changed time after time. How do we set the spiritual temperature? We set the spiritual temperature by how we serve. At the Connection Church, we say, we, saved people serve people. Okay? We are saved to serve. And so when you're driving down the road and you start to pull, pull in this parking lot and you, somebody invited you to the church, you're like, I think I'll go check out this crazy church. And you drive up and there's a guy standing out there and he's waving, waving you in. Man, God is using that guy to set, to set the spiritual temperature, to raise the spiritual temperature, to say, hey, we're expecting you. We're glad that you're here. That, that person out there in the parking lot, those guys, they're making a difference in people's lives. And then we come in here, and you take your kid back to the Connection Kids, and we've got a fully staffed team back there. They're not babysitting. They love kids. They're raising up leaders for the future. And they're teaching people, how, teaching kids how to, how to follow God and how to know God and trust in Him. And what's happening back there is Every bit as important as what is happening in here, okay? And then you come over to the cafe, and there's people over here that are, that are giving you free donuts. And, well, I mean, that's, that's like a miracle, right? You get free donuts. And, and so, so all of these things, it's because people matter to God. People matter to God. And, and that was, that, that's what Jesus is saying here. He's saying, who's coming to the party, the crippled, the blind, the, the lame, the, the ones who knew they needed to be there, who knew they needed God. And we do everything we do here at the Connection Church because people matter to God. And, and, and I want to encourage you, if you're not serving on a ministry team, you can sign up to serve and, and sign up specifically for Easter. Easter's a great reason to, to sign up to serve on a ministry team, okay? And if you'll sign up and you'll say, I'm serving, and all everybody who does serve on a ministry team, we've got a shirt that we're going to give everybody. Check this out. It says, uh, I heart the Connection Church, right? All right. Like last year, we did uh, I heart my church, and I thought, that's cool, but let's get real specific. Let's take it to the next level. It's the Connection Church. We want people to know what church it is, that we're, we're loving. We love God's church at, at large, but we're especially excited about what God is doing right here. And so we'll give you a free t-shirt. Now, here's the thing. Don't just sign up for the free t-shirt, okay? Like, okay, I'll, I'll get the free t-shirt, and then I'll tell somebody hi on Easter Sunday. No, 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 no. No, we want you to, like, really give it your best shot. We're not locking you in. We're not, like, taking your, your blood or anything like that. You're in, but... But you just give it a shot, okay? And sign up to serve. And then the why, check this out. The next thing that you got to have for a great party is you say yes. You say yes to God. The party needs you. And it's not going to be much of a party without you. Saying yes to God. How do you say yes to God? You say yes God, in fact, let's do that right now. Guys, help me up here on the stage. Can you help me say yes? Let's, here we go. I'm going to give you a one, two, three, and let's do this together. One, two, three, yes. All right, everybody. One, two, three. Yes. Oh, man, you just said the most dangerous word that you can possibly say. I know it's a positive word, but let me tell you, when you say yes to God, God's going to use your life for incredible things. When you'll begin to surrender to him and say, God, I'm going to say yes before I even know what it is you want me to do. But I'm telling you yes, and God wants to use you to make a difference in people's lives. And you're saying, yes, God, use my life to keep that heavenly party going, to keep the connection party going. And I'm going to be used by you, God, to invite people to your party. And we'll see people continue to stream into the house and make sure that that party continues in heaven. Because here's something that we know about God. Here we go. You ready for this? God wants his house to be full. 
God loves a full house. Okay, that's a conviction that we have. He doesn't want his house to be half full. That's not good enough. He doesn't want his house to be three quarters full. I had somebody the other day who was visiting from out of town, and they said, they said, um, Pastor, this is a great church. Keep it small. And I, I was like, get thee behind me. Okay? <laughs> because that's not God's heart. That's not God's heart. God wants his house to be totally full. Well, people will push back, and they'll say, well, you know what, Pastor? God doesn't care about numbers. I say, oh, yes, he does. Jesus cared a lot about numbers. You know, somebody counted all the fish that Peter caught in his net. Somebody counted all the leftovers from the feeding of the 5,000. Somebody counted the 5,000, okay? And so, so at the Connection Church, we count people because people count. We believe that, that every number has a name. Every name has a story, and every story matters to God. Therefore, Every story matters to us. Every person matters to us. Now, when you take all the ingredients of a great party, okay, I want you to see what that spells. Okay, we got the P is for people. We got the A, it's for attraction. We got the T, it's for temperature. We got the, no, we got the R, it's for RSVP. We got the T, it's for temperature. We got the yes and the U. And what does it spell out loud? Party! That's right, party. It is a party going on when you get all of these things coming together. And so what I like to say is there ain't no party like a Connection Church party because a Connection Church party don't stop. That's right. That's right. How are we going to do it? How are we going to keep the party going? As we approach Easter, let me share with you about four things that we're going to do now, there, there's actually many more than this, but some four, four key things that you need to know about. One is the Easter tickets. Some people say, why? we got to have tickets to come to a church service. Well, you know, what, is the, what do the tickets say? The tickets say it's an event, right? This is something that, uh, that you're going to want to come to, you're going to want to be at, and we want to make sure there's plenty of space for everybody at all four of our services. Okay, there's going to be four services, uh, Saturday night, 5.30, Sunday, 9, 10.30, noon, and uh, you can, like, attend a service and serve a service and attend a service and serve a service. You just keep that going on. So get your, you can get these tickets out in the, in the lobby at the Easter Central over there in the corner where the source is. The next thing that you want to do is you want to pick up the Connect Your Car paper because you put that in your dashboard next week or the following week. And you're going to have our skilled, talented um, graphic artists. Yes, they're awesome. I'm just certain. They know what they're doing. And you're gonna, we're gonna, they're going to paint your, uh, the back of your windshield with ConnectionEaster.com. All right? And then the, uh, the next thing that you want to do is you want to get your yard sign. We got a yard sign over here. All right? Check this out. Aren't these cool? Everybody get one of these? I got good news for you. I was worried about you because I didn't know if we'd still have some of these left. We actually do. And you can get one of these. So you pick this up in the lobby before you leave. Go put it in your yard. Now, if people are driving down your street this way, right? Here's your house. Here's your yard, like here. You want to put the sign like this, right? Just, just trying to help you out. Just a little tip so people see it from both directions. So it's free for you. And then also, also... Start praying. Start writing down those names that God has laid on your heart. Pray for them and invite, invite, invite. All right? Because we're going we're gonna, to, our goal here is to keep that party going on up in heaven. And, and, and we know that in the New Testament, every time they had a party, it was for lost people. It's because the lost were found. And at the Connection Church, we have a party every week because we're celebrating changed lives. We're celebrating God's power to change lives in this place. And we're seeing that happen. In fact, today we're going to be celebrating baptism together. So that, what baptism is, is it's a picture of changed lives. And, and it's for those people who have taken that step. They've crossed over that line. They say, I'm giving my heart and my life to you, Jesus. Now I want to go public with that. And so I tell you what, let's pray together right now. And we're going to ask that God use us as he prepares us for Easter to make a difference 
around our community and around our city and around the state and around the world. God, thank you for your goodness, Lord. Thank you that you choose to use us as your servants, God, to go out and extend those invitations. You've put people in our paths, and those people are the very people that you have targets on their back. God, you want to, to use us to reach out to them. Thank you for what we believe will happen in their lives. God, as you use us to extend that invitation, give us the courage and the boldness to reach out and make a difference. And God, we thank you. We pray for them right now. We want to use every, every possible means and every possible way to extend that invitation, but ultimately it comes down to us speaking up and telling uh, people, telling them the difference that you've made and that you can make in a life. For some people here today, God, I believe this is the day that they're going to take that step to give their hearts and lives to Jesus. And maybe that's you today, and you say, I want to give you my heart and my life. If you would do that, just pray a simple prayer like this. Say, Dear Lord Jesus, I realize how much I need you. Thank you for the invitation that you've given me to be part of your family. And today I want to respond so very promptly by giving you my heart and my life, giving you my life. And I don't understand it all, but I want to trust in you today. And you just pray this prayer. Say, Dear Lord Jesus, I need you in my life. I pray that you would change me and make me part of your forever family. And from this day forward, I want to begin to walk after you. Help me to, to know you. Help me to live for you. God, thank you for dying for me. And I pray in Jesus' name. Amen. All right.